السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome back brothers and sisters after uh, the Ramadan break sisters are of course listening from the Mariam Center and Azan Radio as well and um, the brothers who are here all welcome to this session of Riyad Salihin Alhamdulillah, we uh, have done most, uh, more than half of the kitab, inshallah, less than half, inshallah, in our uh, next uh, uh, sessions, inshallah. And we stop with the hadith number 949, so 948. We stop with the 948 hadith. And uh, we're starting tonight 949 hadith of Riyadh al-Salihin. And this chapter was Babu Sadaqati Anil Mayyiti wa Dua Ilahu. After somebody died, what we are allowed to do for the deceased, we are allowed to do Dua, which is very beneficial for him. And also we can do Sadaqa for him. This is the title. But the some of the other good deeds we can do as well. We can do Hajj and Umrah for them as well. Parents, uh, grandparents uh, who are beloved on to us, if they died, we can do Umrah for, on behalf of them after my Umrah. We can do Hajj for them after my Hajj. Also, uh, we can, uh, uh, another issue is, uh, yeah, so okay, the dua is very important one though. Dua is very important. And uh, what will, this is from us, what he himself can live in this world that can reach to him continuously. This is the hadith about. That his own, some action could continue to reach to him after his death if he can arrange these things. These are the hadith topic today, 949. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانُ إِنْ قَطَعَ عَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ When a man dies, his all actions are stopped, cut off from him, except three. Sadaqat in Jariya, if he has given some of the sadaqa, which is continuous after him, which is called Sadaqa Jariya, which is a continuous charity. And then second one, Ilmin in Tafa'u Bihi, that he left behind a knowledge by which people are getting benefit of his knowledge. Awalad in Salihin Yadu Lahu, and also if he left his pious. Uh, children, son or daughter, he left behind, they make dua for him, it will be 
uh, benefiting him. So all these three uh, action needed a bit of uh, explanation. Sadaqatin jariya is a continuous charity. What is the difference between general sadaqa and sadaqa jariya? General sadaqa, he given somebody poor man to eat. He is hungry. Alhamdulillah, got food from him, you or money from you. He bought the food he has eaten. Alhamdulillah, good reward. But this is one off, you got it. But if you have given to some causes, which will continue, like you build the masjid, you contribute in the masjid in the charity, is not finishing off within a year or two. If the masjid remaining centuries, hundreds of years, maybe thousands of the years, you are getting continuous reward added to you, to your grave. So this is Sadaqa Jariya. Uh, next one, Elmin Intafaw Bihi, that if you are leaving behind some knowledge, which people will be getting benefit from it. What form it is? It could be that you have written a kitab, a book about Islam, motivating people. Very important knowledge of the deen, like uh, Imam Bukhari, he compiled all Sahih Ahadith. How many people read every day? Tell me in the whole Muslim world. How many thousands of the madaris, madrasa, jamiat, universities, durus happening? Even Riyad al-Salihim, Imam al-Nawi, he compiled Hadith uh, less than uh, 2,000, uh, I believe. Uh, I can give you the number. Yes bit of less than 2,000 hadith, uh, 1,000, um, uh, you can say, uh, uh, 895 hadith. This Riyadh al-Salihin, Imam al-Nawab, centuries ago, has authored, and it is today most read hadith book in the world. Because everybody doesn't read uh, Bukhari, everybody doesn't read Riyadh you know, Muslim, Ibn Majah, Abu Dawood, this big one. So he, what he did, he compiled from all these good books, Sahih books, Sahih Hassan Ahadith, and he compiled in one book, uh, which is very, very beneficial. You can notice in this book of Riyadh Salihin, that all affairs of our life is mentioned through the Ahadith, the guidance you need in every action in our life. Personal life, family life, life of the Ummah, you know, what are the sins we need to know and we need to be uh, abstaining from, what are the good deeds we can do uh, day and night to increase our good deeds, all came in this hadith. So, alhamdulillah, this is the most read, most utilized hadith book in the world. So how much he is getting? We are all getting benefit of this good work, mashallah. So this is one of the example that we can, alhamdulillah, contribute. Well, somebody will be not able to compile the Quran, Hadith, Tafsir, Fiqh, or write book and authoring all these important tasks. What else could be knowledge related? You could be a teacher, for example. You teach, teach you know, something, uh, uh, you know, uh, around the dars, you know, this is also very good if somebody is motivated and putting in action uh, because you have motivated him, you have conveyed the knowledge to him. This is a way, mashallah, you are getting uh, ilm in intafaw bihi. It's not necessarily you'll be teacher and formally teaching. It could be your children, your family members. You are teaching them 40 hadith, uh, you're teaching them riyadh salihin, you're teaching them some good deeds, uh, mashallah. Uh, you, you taught them basic knowledge of the deen, uh, they, mashallah, learn from you, and whole life they'll be practicing. You taught them, you'll be getting the reward continuously, the way they're continuously doing the amal of this hadith. That's why you don't underestimate uh, uh, your role as a father, as a mother, to teach your uh, children directly, not only employing the teacher. I remember Shaykh Haytham, he said, 
I want to give Quran lesson to my own children. Because they'll be reading whole life, inshallah, and I'll be getting reward. It's my investment. I don't want to employ a teacher for them. This is a very good idea. This is my contribution to my children. So this way, uh, our LM is taken uh, from me to my children, and they are learning it. Whole life they'll be practicing, and it will be uh, written every time they do practice, a thawab on my book of Amal. So everybody can do contribute this way, ilm in intafa'u bihi. Uh, other form like uh, you can establish an Islamic school, madrasa, tahfid al-Quran, classes and uh, an institution. All these uh, ilmun in bihi. People are learning the knowledge and they will be spreading it, they will be practicing it, they will be teaching it. So this way uh, also a contribution of the ilm comes. Somebody could be a rich man. He doesn't exercise knowledge that much, but he has money. He's contributing of establishing Islamic schools, colleges, madrasas, universities, Islamic universities. Uh, this way one can do it. Somebody could be buying real salihin copies, giving some people a gift. I say in many wedding time, many you know, marriage uh, after nikah time, I said, uh, who is going to give him gift today, uh, real salihin two volumes? Sometimes you give gift, you know, money for me, give some other things. Why not this good book? Even photos of the Muslim, the dua book, nice, small size. Somebody doesn't have to give it to him, gift. Tell him, please, I'm giving with the commitment, he'll be reading it. And he'll be doing, reading dua in the morning, in the evening, mashallah, he never practice seriously until you have given this book, and he take, take it from you. Ilmun in tafawih. This knowledge given in the form of the book to him, he is practicing it, it is contribution to the knowledge, to him. So there are many forms you can think about, okay? This is Ilm in Tafawbihi. Now, Walad in Salihin Yadu there's the biggest investment for you and me, that we uh, uh, leave uh, behind us the children who are pious, who are Salihin, who are writers, who will yad'u lahu, who will make dua for us. This is the biggest investment. If we can all try hard work, that we do make our children a learning deen from myself, as I said, example of the Khaytham, that I try. Somehow maybe I have limitation, maybe my knowledge is not reaching there, or I may not have the time, then I can send them to learn more Sending to the madrasa, paying there is also your contribution to the alim. Okay? So do this way, and then you make your children are practicing, learning some knowledge and practicing how important it is. The time and age and place we are living, our children are in huge risk of losing their Islamic identity, faith, everything. The challenge around them from the very school life to the friends, wrong friends, and to the social media nowadays, all this network. Inna lillahi wa inna rajon. Last night I was listening to one of the brothers sad story of the, of the son which is just beginning of teen age. The way he entered to the so evil things in that early stage of the life, I was totally shocked with the wrong friends' influence around him, just 15 years old, committing heinous crimes, losing all character in this age, just beginning of the puberty, fully entered to the whole crime world. And this is the main one, which connected with the wrong friends. Big challenge, big challenge for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us about our children. anfusakum wa nara. Protect yourself and your family, your children from hellfire. Kullu mauludin yuladu ala al-fitra. This 15 years boy was not born as a criminal. Was born as an innocent child. No sin he carries. Pure. Fitrah, Salima, 
very pure nature. No spot, no shirk, no kabira sin with him. And it is our duty to preserve him yeah, and to protect him from the all evil things around him. Fa'abawahu yuhawwedanihi aw yunasiranihi aw yumajisanihi. The parents will make him. Is he becoming follower of another religion, of Judaism or Christianity or fire worshipping? Or a good Muslim or a bad Muslim? All in the hand of the parents. For Abawahu, parents are making him. They can make it if they are sincerely trying. Sometimes you tried your best, it may not work. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge. Yes, you have done your best, but this is his own fate, his own crime. But you tried best, Allah will be witness for that. But if we have lacking, we did not take this task seriously. We spend, you know, ourselves busy with this. You know, our friends, all other time we uh, utilize, uh, we ignore the duty of our own family member to save them from the hellfire, then we have a serious consequence for that. Because uh, this child will complain against the parents. Oh Allah, you have given my responsibility in the early stage of my life in my parents' hand, why they did not take it seriously. Why they left me, that I am with the wrong friends only. Did they work hard to protect me? He'll complain. So this is Allah bin Salih in Yadu'ulahu. If the child is pious, the children are pious, mashallah, they make dua, it will go to add your book of Amal, all writer's deeds. You're getting promotion. There is a hadith as well. Uh, a man will see in the grave, will see in the day of judgment as well, where his amal, his own action is up to her. Then there is increment, there is addition of his good deeds. His scale or his position in Jannah is getting continuously promoted to the upper level, upper rank, upper rank. You'll see, Allah, how it happening, all this, uh, uh, you know, promotion and upper rank for me, I am dead already. How it is increasing continuously. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, because you left behind pious children, family members, they are making dua for you, that giving you continuous promotion, increment, increasing your rank to Allah. So this is the biggest investment in our life. People are so concerned to buy a very nice house for the children. Working day and night. Bought a big house. But he didn't give time for them. He has no time to, to look after them uh, of their deen, character, morality, tarbiyah. He is not given focus. Only to buy, left for them a nice house. They will be in trouble with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these three things, very important, sadaqat in jariyah, the, the knowledge which will be used after you, people will be getting benefit, and number three is to have uh, the left behind pious children, righteous children. That is very important investment for ourselves. Okay. Then, uh, coming to the answer, what will benefit the disease after the death? This is the chapter finish here. Now, another chapter, chapter number 163. It's called Babu Thana in Nasi al Mayyid. Praising the deceased. If people, after somebody dies, they talk good about him. He is such a good man. He is helping people. So, he was. Uh, always a very humble man. He was, you know, always cooperative. All, anything goodness, people talk about this. This is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept their um, 
uh, you know, all this uh, recognition, praising of him. You are not allowed to praise somebody who is alive in front of him. This is Hadith. <laughs> Say, don't do this. Okay? You may thank, you may appreciate up to a certain extent, but don't praise too much. But after somebody died, if you think he has done very good things, you are allowed. There is no restriction. You can praise him. Because he'll be not boosted anymore. He's not in this world. There is no real will coming from him. Alhamdulillah. Safe. So about this, the very beautiful hadith, hadith number 950, and Anasin radiallahu anhu qal, marru bi janazatin fa'athna wa alayha khayran. In, in occasion, companions uh, was passing by a funeral procession. Somebody was carried to graveyard. A deceased body is carried. Uh, when they are passing, uh, in, passing by the companions, uh, the other people around, they said, uh, you know, فَأَثْنَوَ uh, خَيْرًا They praised him. Oh, he was such a good man. SubhanAllah, I know. He was such a good man. People said a very good comment about him. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Prophet said by hearing the comment of the people, the good comment, he said, uh, he will certainly enter it. He'll certainly enter it. Certainly it is accepted by Allah. People's all this praise of him will take him to right place. That's confirmed for him. Then another case, Summamaru bi Ukhra, another day, they were passing by another Mayit's body being carried to the grave. Uh, who is that guy? Oh, so and so. Fa'athna wa alayha sharran. They spoke ill of the deceased. Oh, this man, evil man. He was a criminal. He was an awful person. He was a very harmful man in the society. They made all this comment about him. By hearing that, Prophet ﷺ said, okay, wajabat, that uh, he will uh, certainly enter it. He will get consequence of that. He may go to hellfire because of all these uh, people talking ill about him, talking about bad uh, all this dealing and his deeds are discussed. Then Umar radiallahu said, Ma wajabat. O Prophet, you said, wajabat, that which is, uh, he'll enter it. Uh, what is it? Then he said, Hada athnaytum alayhi khayran, fa wajabat lahul jannah. Okay? That what do you uh, mean by that he will uh, uh, certainly enter it? He said, oh, prophet, uh, oh, people, you praise the first person so he will enter Jannah. Because of you praising him a certificate, a recommendation, a taskiyah, accepted by Allah. Okay? Wahada asnaitum alayhi the other guy, uh, you spoke ill of the second person so he will enter hell. Because you are all witnesses of Allah. Antum shuhadaullahi fil ard. You are Allah's witnesses on earth. It is, of course, genuine one. If naturally people spoke about a person, mashallah, he was such a good man. And naturally people spoke about somebody who was really horrible in the society. People, everybody are scared of him and was annoyed by him or disturbed by him. They naturally have said that. But it is not necessarily an artificial arrangement to make. Now, I was in Malaysia when I was lecturing there in the university. So uh, after Janaza, every time we attend, then people uh, uh, will ask the Imam uh, or one of the relatives, how was this man? So he, they'll say, oh, he was a good man, he was a good man. So this way they would like to artificially arrange it. This is not the hadith is recommending us. Allah. This is the naturally people 
will say by themselves without any kind of arrangement or artificial kind of arrangement, okay? However, if a person is good and people did not speak about this, inshallah, don't worry, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appreciate that. But of course, um, people's talking about him good is itself that he was good. So this is the, uh, you know, something, uh, if we especially, uh, when we, um, you know, an example-wise, we speak about the great imams, Imam Bukhari, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Hadana Hanbal, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, we praise their contributions, so when you get benefit, when you read their all contribution, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Ibn Qayyim, so the beautiful presentation of the Quran and Sunnah, we make dua for them, this is natural. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu will accept all this. We talked about Imam Anawi, Allah. Hopefully Allah will accept it. So this is natural. This is very beneficial. We should recognize that. We should give them this status, inshallah. And that is also encouragement for others. Oh, somebody died, and he did some good deeds, and people are talking about this. Allah, this is nice something. Why myself not doing this? It's not to get recognition of the people for name and fame, but it may be after my death. Helping me? Alhamdulillah, that's so important that we live in the society as a good person, not as somebody, people will be very annoyed in our existence, with our existence in the society. That the people will miss, subhanAllah, he was such a good person. So this is something, encouragement for us to live behind. Hadith number 951. An Abil Aswad Kala Kadim to Madinata. Fajalastu Ila Amr ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Famarat bihim janazatun. Fausni ala sahibi ha khayran. Fakala Amr ajaba. Okay. The same hadith, it is uh, from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Same similar one came from Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Abul Aswad, he said, he was a tabi'i. He said, I came to Medina and I was sitting behind or close to Omar ibn al-Khattab when he was Khalif. Then one of the janazah was passing by. A man was, the dead man was, you know, taken, carried, uh, and they were passing by. And people are praising this man who died, talking very good about him. Omar said, yes, it is confirmed for him. It is secured for him. Then another body was carried. Then the people also was talking good about him. He said, yes, it is confirmed for him. It is secure for him. Then third person's body was carried. Then people are talking ill about the person. Oh, so and so he died. It was a criminal. He was, you know, how awful. His presence was so much, you know, um, giving hard time to the people. Faqal Omar Ajawat, Omar said, it's confirmed, it's secured. Qal Abu Aswad, faqultu I say to Omar, Wama Ajawat ya Amir al Mu'mineen, what is confirmed for him, every person you, you mentioned, you said? Qal Qultu kama qala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I said, Samuel, we asked. Prophet ﷺ, similar situation. He asked us, we asked him why, what is wajabat? He answered to us, and he said, Ayyuma muslimin shahidallahu arba'atun bi khayr, adkhalahu allahu al-jannah. If any Muslim after his death, four peoples are uh, attesting, uh, giving, uh, you know, him uh, recommendation, uh, or testify his righteousness, oh, mashallah, this was Abdullah, so and so was a very good man, mashallah, very pious man, mashallah, very cooperative. Nobody will complain against him. His character was beautiful. If at least four people give this kind of attestation and testification, uh, testify him, then Allah uh, will grant him Jannah. Four people talking good about him. Of course, these four people will be not just, uh, you know, some of them, uh, they love him, he loved them. It is not the case. 
genuine good character. What is liked by Allah, they like this. They know how it is. Those four people, you know, uh, at a station and they are, uh, yeah, yeah, all this recognition is not normal matter. It's something they closely watched him, they found him really uh, pious. That is here, uh, you know, is indicated. If it's opposite other way, if somebody was very bad and four people genuinely said, we know, we have witnessed this man was like this. He did all this crime. So four people, he mentioned. Then Prophet was asked, O Thalatha, if three people testify him, he said, O Thalatha, even three people say, you know, you know, testifying, Allah will accept as well. Then people asked Prophet, what is not even two? Only two people. He said, even, even two. Then what about one? They said, we are hesitant to ask him about one man. We didn't ask him about this issue. So again, our good deed to please Allah is not getting people's satisfaction, you know, only and their praise. Oh, after my death, he will be giving just, you know, all this kind of. No, this is not my purpose. I do for the sake of Allah, and Allah will arrange that. Okay. Next, next uh, chapter is chapter number 164. Babu Fadli Man Mata Lahu Auladin Sigar. Okay? The virtue of somebody who has bereaved of his uh, infant children. If somebody loses his infant children early stage of the life, that is good news for the parents. This is the chapter. Hadith number 952. And Anasin Anhu Anukal. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من مسلم يموت له ثلاثة لم يبلغ الحنث إلا أدخله الله الجنة بفضل رحمته إياه. In this hadith, Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, any Muslim who loses three children before they reach the age of maturity will be granted Jannah by Allah سبحانه وتعالى out of His mercy for them. So anybody was losing the children in early stage of their life, that is a huge sadness, of course. Parents losing children in early stage is so uh, difficult, so hard for them to accept. But they do uh, accept it with their sabr, inshallah, uh, alhamdulillah, there is reward for them. Next hadith, uh, similar, 953, Anabi Hurairat radiallahu anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يموت لأحد من المسلمين ثلاثة من الولد لا تمسه النار إلا تحلة القسم A Muslim whose three children die in infancy will not be touched by the hellfire except for the fulfillment of Allah's oath Okay What is fulfillment of Allah's oath? Oath وَإِمْ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا uh, Allah said, there is no one of you but will cross over it, over the hell. What last sentence is saying, I'll come back to later on. The first version of the hadith, that if, if the parents are losing three children while they are very infant level, it's very shocking for them, but with the sabr, taking decree of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make them they will not touched by hellfire. Okay, then last line, illa tahillata al qasam, because Allah subhanahu wa taala said in the Quran, okay, in the surah uh, number nineteen and number seventy-one, He said, wa im minkum illa wa riduha. There is not one of you but will cross over it over hell. You know, this is a place of hashar, where we all gather to give our account to Allah. After that, there is a bridge. Underneath the bridge is hellfire. And end of the bridge is Jannah, paradise. So all people will come to go to paradise. They must cross the bridge above the 
hell. This is called Sirat. So when even people of Jannah will be coming to the, on the bridge, they'll be very worried because they see many people are falling down, falling down, falling down. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is worried for his ummah. He's in the Sirat, in a part of the Sirat, he's making, Rabbi Sallim, Sallim. He's making dua, oh Allah, save, save, save my ummah, save my ummah. They're not falling, they're not falling. So every believer will see many of them are falling down. They will be scared. That this scariness will happen. This is the qasam of Allah. Everybody must be happening something to them. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah, the believer will not fall down. But they will be worried about whenever come on the bridge. Ya Allah, may Allah save us. They'll be very, they'll be in panic. So that is the only bit of touch of hellfire, means not physically touching, but bit of feeling will have. That is the qasam of Allah. None of you will be just going in a way, will not see the hellfire. No, you must be crossing above it. So be careful that you are not falling down. Get ready for that. Okay, that is the message here. How long? This depends on our amal, our good deeds. If it is very good level of deeds, mashallah. Shh. And somebody will be lying, you know, going so, uh, like fast, uh, faster kind of horse. Somebody will be a bit slow. Somebody will be further slow. Somebody will be even, uh, uh, subhanAllah, I'll call it, um, uh, they will be uh, crawling. Crawling, crawling. Their amal is so weak. And sometimes the crane of Jahannam will come to catch them. And there'll be injury in their body. They'll be struggling. But in the end, they will be able to keep. Allah. About to fall down, but Allah saved them. So the speed and risk are in that level. <laughs> like, you know, an uh, nabiyun or Siddiqun, faster. Then, a shuhada, a bit of slow, but faster as well. Then, a salihin, normal people, they have also grades and levels. Some of them will be, mashallah, quite faster. Some of them will be a little bit of slow. Some of them will be further slow. Some of them will be like crawling slowly, slowly, and very worried. He may fall down. He may fall down. So this is the levels. Yeah. Uh, first time of Eid, I, I don't recall that one, but of course the believer will be like riding horses quicker. Somebody will be even faster than them. Mm. Mm. Various levels, inshallah. Allah may Allah save us from this challenging, worrying time. May Allah make us hisab and yasira. Subhanallah. This is panicking. Every one of you must be crossing the Jahannam. So be careful, taking a provision to pass it safely, not to fall down. This is the ayah referring to us. Hadith number 954, and Abi Sayyid al-Khudri قال, جاءت امرأة إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقالت يا رسول الله ذهب الرجال بحديثك فجعل لنا من نفسك يوما نأتيك فيه تعلمنا مما علمك الله. A lady came to uh, plea to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She said, Ya Rasulullah, <coughs> the, the men are always around you in the masjid to learn from you and we cannot approach you, you know, very close uh, because the men are around. <coughs> cannot you make a day special for us, a time located for us so we can come there with no men around and we can ask you some questions and learning from you directly. So you teach us what Allah has taught you. Qala istamina yama kada wa kada. Then he has given them a, 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 a time and a day, and a day weekly. You gather there, I'll be coming to give only women session to run. 
ديكي فاتاهن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم تفعلمهن مما علمه الله so he came to the fixed date and he was giving them some inshallah good knowledge of the deen ثم قال then he said to them in that session ما من كنا من امراه تقدم ثلاثه من الولد الا كانوا لها حجابا من النار he said uh, the, any woman of you whose three children die in the infancy time in very early stage they will be a guard for her against hellfire a barrier for her against hellfire they'll save her this you know the early death of the children early you know, losing the children in a very early stage faqalat imra'atun wa ithnain if two children ya rasulullah not three somebody maybe lost only two faqala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa ithnain ya ibn if she misses two she loses two children khalas she'll be getting that as well they'll be guard for her from the hellfire even two even one had this hadith said even one even one and remember one of the uh, occasion a sahabi when he buried his his uh, his, his his child in, in who was infant and after he buried him he was so distressed so depressed so sad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him are you so sad he said of course ya rasulullah we can imagine losing a child of lovely child he says he said will be not happy in the day of judgment when the child will come from the gate of jannah he'll be waiting for you he come to the gate of jannah he'll be pulling your cloth like this and pulling you to jannah and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was pulling this man's you know cloth and he was pulling said he'll be pulling you to jannah will be not happy so of course he has sabr so he had very good sabr from that hadith even about the miscarriage don also came the other hadith that the, if uh, the mother lose the child in the very you know, before child is born then this child will be pulling mom with the umbilical cord to the jannah will be connected this way umbilical cord is connected the child with the jannah child will be not going to jahannam since he is going to jannah mom is connected he will be going to jannah so such a good news in islam subhanallah if people you know are aware of this knowledge may allah save us from the more test and more trial but if it is something happen there is comfort for us as well there is good news for us unfortunately many people don't have this knowledge even that's why important of knowledge in the dunya is so you know high many time many time people lose the opportunity of the huge reward okay uh, in one occasion when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was uh, in, in the case of this was a mother or father crying so much okay uh, 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 that is a, a lady who came to the graveyard uh, when he, her child was buried and she came there to cry wailing out of the sorrow and sadness and she was so occupied by sorrow and sadness and she was crying rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was passing by said that if you have sabr you will be huge reward for you jannah she didn't realize didn't recognize who is speaking to her she said man you don't know what test i'm going through if you are tested like this you will understand you'll understand the consequence of the you know of this kind of hard time prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not say anything to her because she is now uh, not in her full sense then somebody heard that later on and say to this lady prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gone to home uh, she didn't make any further comment because she is now out of control herself then a man came you know lady whom you are speaking to do you know no i don't know he's a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna lillah i did not know that i didn't realize she was so overwhelmed by sorrow and sadness then she said 
uh, uh, yeah, I go. She rushed to now to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She said, Ya Rasulullah, forgive me, I did not realize. Inshallah, I'll have sabr now. He said, Inna sabru fil wahlat al Indeed, the real sabr and his real reward in the first instance, first occurrence. That one is missed by you. Okay? So that's why this knowledge is important. How many our brothers and sisters will be losing, you know, uh, their children in this early stage, but they don't have sabr? The way they cry, the way they, they become mad. If they have knowledge, they could be controlling themselves. It's Azam time, it seems. Our next chapter will be Kitabu Ada with Safar. The, uh, inshallah, traveling have some etiquette and some adab we need to learn, inshallah. And then we'll be also uh, related with the Safar. Uh, if there is a group, we can make somebody Amir, some other things. Azan could be delayed uh, one or two minutes. I will take one or two questions only, inshallah. Hazan ek to deri te den, inshallah. Tai, pada. Yes. Huh? Sorry? Oh, oh yes, we have 15 minutes. Alhamdulillah, very good. Because uh, I was uh, getting some noise, I thought it's Azan time. No problem. So we have, alhamdulillah, 15 minutes, mashallah, okay? So, yes. Mm -hmm. Take the parents and take the hand. I, I don't recall such a hadith. I, I could look into it, inshallah. Uh, but it, it, it doesn't come in my memory at the moment. Deceased. Very rewardful, very good, yes. Now, he's asking that after death, there are many people in many cultures, many countries, they do some kind of celebration, coming together, you know, some kind of maybe um, uh, feeding as well happen, you know, some function happen after four days, maybe after 40 days, maybe death anniversary, all this. These are all against the sunnah. We are only allowed to make dua and doing hajj and umrah, giving charity, and getting benefit of the knowledge of him, inshallah, that he is, uh, is all this mentioned here. And most of these things are all bid'ah. It is came from the different other cultures. You know, the other religious people, you know, some kind of uh, uh, shirk-based religion, polytheism, they made something because there is now Jannah, Jahannam in the sense we have. There is no dua uh, like us. So they must be doing something for their beloved one. 
So that was established in many religions, uh, deviated religious uh, practice and local custom. We should be always doing Allah. which is Quran and Sunnah based action. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa left very good practices for us. That should be only taught and learned. That's why coming the point of importance of the Sahih knowledge. Because of not having good knowledge, authentic knowledge, people will be following the practice and custom and all these, you know, other religion practice will be coming to our religion. In the graveyard, having big f bucket of flour, the f f you know, and uh, nicely uh, um, making some kind of a structure, wall, you know, many other things. All are with that because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sent Ali radiallahu anhu. Ali, go check if any grave is any wall having wall or raised something, make it demolished all soil level. Nothing is allowed. No flower, nothing. No picture. No name. Even all this, what call it, the nameplate should not be there, should not be there. Only for identification, this is my father's grave, how I know, there are hundreds of the grave, maybe one stone in this area, sign of my father's grave, maybe one small tree, you know, this tree is my father's area. This one, natural one, could be considerable. Apart from that, no any other kind of you know, structure, any name, uh, 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 anything could not be there. If you go to the visit uh, Muslim graves nowadays, most of them will be doing so many things. All the Garden of Peace, they alhamdulillah try to do as, as, as much as possible to avoid all this. So they make also a small <laughs> name Allah. plate. I said, why this is? They are good people. They said, uh, please, because our people coming to make so much idea of their own if we don't put their one, they'll be having a go of fighting with us. Very emotional. So we did a minimum one only uh, to make them, they are quiet, we are not able to we fight here for, you know. Ideally, nothing there. Nothing there. Just soil. Okay? We go to uh, Al Baqi graveyard. The Sahaba's nameplate is there. The Prophet's wife, his family, nothing. This is the one, this is Islam. Okay. So you have seen an uh, uh, image of, in social media of a lady. Okay. Somebody lost his mother and he is in tears. Okay. Image of somebody having tears. Okay. That means he is sad, so you think, uh, he reminding you about the sadness. sadness. This is some kind of, you know, people when they are, uh, you know, excessively sad, they would like to exercise these things to increase their sadness. While Islam uh, give us a good teaching that you, if you are sad whole day and night, 24 hours, what is benefiting your mother or father who died? No. Only if you are praying, salah, making dua for them, visiting their grave and making dua, these and giving charity, all would be only benefiting. Again, coming back to the knowledge, people don't know what to do for the beloved one. That is ignorance, in fact, making all this nonsense. Barakallah. Mm. 
this is a difficult question that whenever uh, people have no knowledge, so they will be, uh, after somebody died, uh, you know, for doing a favor to the mayyit, to the deceased, they will be arranging Quran khatam, Surah Yasin khatam, or any kind of other khatam, and they think, and after that they'll be making dua to the mayyit, and if you tell them this is bid'ah, they will not accept, because they have been listening, practicing this from their forefather, you know, that's why important knowledge comes. We need to spread the knowledge. You can show, look, this is the hadith. What will benefit the mayyit? Today, how many actions we found? Remember the hadith? Show them. Sadaqatan jariya. Waladin salihin yad'u lahu. Titus killed them. And ilmin in tafa'u bihi. He told them, giving sadaqah, this is the hadith said. To doing anything of this gather together, doing this khatam, that khatam, you never find Sahaba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to do it. The ulama, those are very knowledgeable, our great imams, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, none of them told us. We check all fiqh book, not find this. Try to speak to them with a with little bit of, I know they are very emotional. Oh, our forefather is doing all this. They said, forefather is not really the evidence of Sharia. So this is the hadith says, I only believe that, show them the hadith. After that, if there's, you know, you see, uh, they are not listening to you, his question, can I attend there? Well, if you think, if I don't attend, the relationship will be cut off. They will have very big problem. Ideal is to avoid that. You say, I will make dua for them, inshallah, I'll be giving 10 pound charity for them, or don't mention the, I'll be giving some charity, I'll be doing dua for him. If I go Umrah, inshallah, I'll make dua for him. So you say this, this is sunnah, I only practice sunnah. But if you think it is too much for them, they will be totally turning against you, oh, this is man, this and that. So you may attend, uh, and you, if this, there is an opportunity, you can tell them, I came here, you do this, but um, I'm not a big scholar, but I know what Hadith said, I was attending. Just say polite message, it could be okay. This is a mushkil, I know. But I'm saying is there any difference of opinion about this? Because there are some imams and uh, so-called ulama that are attending this. In fact, you know, in every, uh, in, the, in the Arab world, pure uh, Arab area, less of this practice. If you go to Asia, go to Africa, huge kind of bidah practice. Even so-called imams are doing all this as well. So this is difficult, I know. That's again lacking the Authentic knowledge is a big issue. Uh, many of the imams, even in this country, you go to many of the masajid, in the masjid, Allah, Muhammad, all written. Abu Bakr, Ali, Osman, it could be written as well. Inside the masjid. All this traditionally coming, and some of the imams who are not very highly educated. They have been practicing, and there is some hadiyya for them as well to attend. In Egypt, uh, you know, they will be Atama, they call it. Uh, there will be Qurra, will be invited, spread, uh, you know, they'll be reciting whole Quran with a microphone if needed. All people will say, wow, wow, they're listening to Quran. So in every country, locally, there are some local culture. So it is, it is I know, not so easy. Slowly, slowly, mashallah, uh, exercising more knowledge is the only treatment and talk to the people according to their understanding. If you give too much high dose, they may turn against you. That's why, you know, ruaid and ruaid and khatwat and khatwat and step by step, slowly, slowly, try to educate people, educate people, educate people. Okay, inshallah. We are like talking. Now. The Azam time is coming very soon. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, ladies visiting grave, there is restriction in the hadith. Laan Allahu zairatil kubur. Those who are women frequently visiting grave, may Allah curse them. This is the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nowadays, in the modern days, many people will be going with the groups. Uh, this is a, a new trend started. Subhanallah, against the hadith. Now, fadl. Done. Okay. Hmm.
So parents leaving for the children the good books. Okay. Fine. Of course, of course. Giving charity on behalf of the parents by the children will reach them. Either it could be money form, charity, sadaqah, to the poor people, or the Islamic causes, giving to the masjid. Also giving books to the poor people to read, Islamic books. Giving copies of the Quran, translation of the Quran, Riyadh Salih, Hadith, to read. Hassan Muslim Dua book to people. May Allah give a reward to my parents. I can make this niya, no problem. That's fine, absolutely. That way I can do Hajj and Umrah, giving charity. We can distribute knowledge on behalf of my parents as well. Yeah, if you done your, your Hajj, the next time you go, I do Hajj from my father, from my mother. Yeah? Um, is it other time now, inshallah? Jazakumullah khairan. Subhanakallahumma. Alhamdulillah. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Is it okay after Maghrib for next week? Couple of weeks? Then, inshallah, maybe in the May, we could bring it after Asr, inshallah. I said after Asr. <laughs> no, after Asr. It will be coming. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah khairan. Subhanakallahumma. Alhamdulillah. Ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة